somebody shout amen. amen. Anywhere they disapproved you by virtue of this anointing this morning, receive a God approval. If your amen is louder than your neighbor, the Lord will give you divine approval. Clap your hands and give God praise. Psalm 23, I'll be speaking on what I titled operating. Somebody say operating in the overflow. Shout it loud, operating in the overflow. Navigate in the overflow. It's possible to be in a year of overflow and you experience underflow. Very possible. It's very possible. A man that doesn't understand how to operate in the overflow will be by the ocean and be thirsty. I spoke to someone yesterday and I said, when you are by the ocean, the amount of water you carry is not dependent on the ocean. It's dependent upon your, your, your container. Because ocean don't run dry. I don't think the ocean is ever worried. Will I run out of water? That is your God. Your God is greater than the ocean. You are not hearing me. So whatever you need for life and godliness. is an amount of godliness. Every, you don't need to do bad stuff to become great. You don't need to do anything bad. You don't need to cheat to pass an exam. You don't need to mess around to have a man. You don't need to do fraud to become rich. Scripture say he himself became poor. That through his poverty we might become rich. So the, your poverty has been solved. You just don't know. Because somebody took your place. On the cross. Somebody shout amen. amen. If you are jobless, you have a job, you just don't know. If you are jobless, you just don't know that the job has been made available for you. You just need to ask the Lord, open my eyes that I may see. Water was there. Water was there. Water was there. Hagar was thirsty. The water had run out for Hagar and the son, Ishmael. The water was right there. God did not have to move her from San Antonio to Jalingo to see water. Wherever the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given it unto you as an inheritance. From today, may God make your residence the gate of heaven. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Did you hear me? Somebody did not hear what I said. I said, may God make your residence the gate of heaven. As you wave your hands and shout amen, the Lord will launch you to a higher dimension. Tell your neighbor, I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Turn your Bibles with me this morning. Psalm 23, Psalm 23. The Bible says, verse 5, you prepare. Somebody say, you prepare. A feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You are honor me, somebody say you honor me by anointing my head with oil my cup overflows with blessings somebody your cup will overflow with blessings, surely your goodness and your unfailing love will pursue me That's, that shall be your testimony this year somebody that shall be your testimony this year your goodness and unfailing. Somebody shout unfailing. Will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord. Forever in Jesus name. It, may the Lord bless his word in Jesus name. You may be seated. God bless you. This year, our year of the overflow. In our month of godliness. God is promising us. That the package of overflow involves salvation. I want everybody to be clear. When I talk about overflow, I'm not talking about money. Money is part of the overflow, but money is not the overflow. Because a man's life does not consist upon the abundance of things that he owns. 
So please don't get it twisted when we talk about overflow. Overflow is abundant life in God. Abundant life in God. And in that abundant life, poverty is not part of it. Hear me clearly. God wants you to prosper. The Bible says he delights in the prosperity of his children. Nobody will give birth to a child and enjoy that child coming home with a failing grade from school. Do you like that? Even in kindergarten, I want my child to be number one. Kindergarten. You didn't hear me. Daycare. Who, don't, who doesn't like good things? Yes. Yes. I asked. I used to take my child to, uh, what, they call, what they call the daycare again? Country home. Country Country home. If I'm going to pay $350 every week for daycare, you better come home first. You, 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 you better come first. You, <laughs> what are we talking about here? You don't escort people to go to school. No, you are coming home. Is there a report card? Can you pronounce some words? So don't let anybody let you think that Christianity is mediocrity. No. My own understanding of working with God is that I wish above all things that I prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. There is no diminishing returns in God. Anybody that tells you that their own idea or ideology of faith is suffering and suffering, no. He suffered already. Yes, sir. Now listen to me. I did, he didn't say that persecutions will not come. He didn't say troubles will not come. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome. So even in the problem, you overcome. He didn't say that COVID-19 will not come. But he said you will pass through. He didn't say you will stay there. He said even though you walk through the valley, you are walking through. You are not there to make your bed. You didn't hear me. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? He didn't say you should make your bed in the valley of the shadow of death. He says when you pass through, I will be with you. May God be with you all the days of your life. Tell them I'm passing through. I'm passing through. I'm passing through. Just like I understand that exams are not meant to demote me. Exams. No professor, right? Do you people set exam? Prof. You don't set exam to fail people. You set it to be able to show who is going up from who is not going up. You will go up this year. You are not hearing me. I said you will go up this year. Let me prophesy. I said you will go up this year. Uh-uh. You are a dangerous one. <laughs> Let me give you. Uh, good to see you, Pastor Sawyer. God bless you. Uh, uh, that's what we are talking about. When the Lord bless you, you look handsome. Tell your neighbor, I'm blessed and highly favored. Come on, shout it again. I'm blessed and highly favored. He anointed my head. There's, this, there's a fresh anointing coming upon you. Why is he anointing your head? He's anointing your head in adversity so that you enter prosperity. Spiritual prosperity. You are, are you hearing me? Soul prosperity. You prosper in your prayer life. You prosper in the word. You prosper in faith. You prosper in everything. You work with God. You prosper. Visions of God. Fruit of the spirit. Gifts of the spirit. If that is you, let me hear your amen like thunder. If you, if you know this God, you will discover that opportunities like COVID is for your elevation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me tell you. COVID like this is for blessing his people. That's how you know that your God is really alive. Because when everything is down, you are up. You are kept by the power of God. There's an invisible hand. You are not hearing me. Ooh, Tell you about there's an invisible hand holding me. Did you hear me? Tell you about I said there's an invisible hand. There's an ah! So we give, I will give angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. 
in all your ways, COVID way, ordinary way, non-COVID way, he will keep you. They will bear you up in their arms. You will not dash your foot against a stone. Somebody in the name of Jesus, you will not stumble this year. I prophet, I say you will not stumble this year. This year shall be the best year of your life. This year shall be the year of overflow. A year you experience God. A year you see God. A year you hear God. A year you visions of God. Revelations from God. Dimensions of God. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it come to the imagination of the heart of man. What God has in store for those who love him. Because you love him this year. May God distinguish you. Shout amen like thunder. See now. Even in this year, you don't know why God is isolating you. So you can hear his voice. He that dwells in the secret place secret place. Some of the quarantine is from God. Some of the isolation is from God. Those of you who went through some of the things, did you not see God? Talk to me. <laughs> did you not hear God? In the midst of when you saw that your breath is from God, you now understood some scriptures. You wonder how why is pastor talking? Me that is talking. I, you know I bet I know, I know some things. Don't let the devil knock you down. This year is your year of overflow. Somebody shout amen. In the overflow there is salvation. Somebody say salvation. Shout it loud. Salvation. Mm -hmm. Salvation. For your life. Salvation. For your destiny, salvation with God, having a greater, better personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's saying it. John 10 10. The thief come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life. I have it in abundance. In the overflow, your faith thrives. You don't get weak, you don't get into despair, you don't get depressed. Anybody that is Failing and falling and getting down in seasons like this, that you allow the things happening around you to make you so depressed, then you are not in God. You are not. Because when you are in God, your faith is built up. I'm telling you, your faith is built up, except you are not in Him. I'm not talking about just being around Him, I'm talking about in Him, in God, in Him. The thief does not have any access to you. The Bible says in him is life and that life is the light of men. And that light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. In God, in Christ Jesus. So in the overflow, salvation, there's grace, there's favor, there's goodness, there's mercy, there's peace, there's joy, there is hope, there's blessings, there's love, there's strength, there's virtue, there's power. There's the move of the Holy Spirit. There's the, the gifts of the Spirit. There's the fruit of the Spirit. All those are the things we've been praying in this fasting and prayer season. May God launch you more into the overflow. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Again, the overflow is abundant life in Christ Jesus. And only in Christ you can find the overflow. Now, is it possible to say, Pastor, yes, I've given my life to Christ, but I'm not experiencing the overflow. It's very possible if you don't listen to the words of Christ. If you don't obey Christ. You can go through school and school don't go through you. Have you ever seen a bad doctor? Oh yes. Some, some doctors are horrible. Yes. Yes. You know why? Because they just went there based on their smartness. They, didn't, they don't have any, they didn't let the training pass through them. They just went through the class. They were smart. They have no love for people. They didn't care about it. Oh, it's not just to cut it. Yeah, you can cut. Anybody can be a great surgeon. Is there anybody that knows how to cook that can own a restaurant? 
I told someone that you can cook does not mean you should open a restaurant. Oh, I can cook jello fry. Okay, fine. Open it. Let's see. Because there's management of people. There's love for people. Your, your, your style of jello fries may be hot jello fries, but everybody don't eat hot food. In, in America here, like my son, it don't matter how wonderful that food is. If it's spicy, it. my son will not touch it. <laughs> See me, he ain't touching that food. So you can't say your recipe is what takes care of everybody. That's not the way life works. So, you, so many people are in Christ, but they want to do it their way. It will not work. The beautiful thing about Christ is Christ does not drag with you. If you think Jesus is going to come down, and say, hey, behold my son. No, he ain't going to do that. He said, my yoke is easy. My body is light. Learn, look at the word. Learn from me. So that you are in Christ. Does not mean you know everything about Christ. So you need to learn from him. You need to learn from his word. That's what we're saying today. So as you hear the word of God every Sunday. As you hear it every Wednesday. As you read it on a personal basis. If you don't learn the truth of it. It will not be part of you. The evidence that you truly know the word is the way you live your life. Not in just head knowledge. And there's a point I'm going this morning. So you want to see why is pastor speaking like this. Number one key is be in Christ. Tell your neighbor, be in Christ. Say it loud, be in Christ. Yes. Number two point is that you make sure that you remain and abide in him. I've already addressed this. That's not where I'm going this morning. You remain. Somebody say remain. remain. Just like a tree. If you, the way we talk about the overflow. It's not the day you plant a, a, a seed that you begin to harvest it. Is, that, is it the same? No. It takes time. So in your walk with God, God has to prove you over time. Yes. Even though you are hearing the prophetic word, God will launch you to the overflow. God will prove your character. Oh, yes. Is it the day you gain admission that you graduate? No. It's not. So, don't. I, I try to help you understand as a pastor this morning that your work with God is not rocket science. It's proven obedience over a period of time. It's not the day Jesus was born that he was glorified as Christ. It took 33 years. 33 years on this earth. In that 33 years, 30 years of it was to learn. Three and a half years was for manifestation. So for anybody that will operate in the overflow, your years of training will be longer than your years of manifestation. You didn't hear me. I don't, I don't, I, I want to be careful not to get into politics, but let me, I have to make some things relevant. Even the current president, he tried three times to become president. Talk to me. He experienced personal tragedies. Lost his daughter in a tragic car accident. Lost his son. Lost the wife. Dr. Jill is not the first wife. Saved humanity. Did everything from his own personal place to become president. He never got there. Then suddenly, one African American picked him and told him, will you serve me as vice president? Go read. Served him. Never took advantage. Never tried to usurp. Never tried to over. Even when he was more intelligent, more advanced, more experienced, more knowledgeable about it, he respected him. If you even watch, served him. And he served him. He became one. I don't know whether you heard me. What you don't serve, you can't become. You wonder why Saul failed. He didn't serve nobody. A sign you will never enjoy the overflow is if you don't pass through the path of service. Isn't it interesting that for God to elevate David, God had to make David serve even the bad one. Even in service, God does not care who. 
God does not care how. The principle is what counts. That in the midst of, you know, sometimes this is a wicked person, I will not serve him. You have missed the point. You have missed it. Do you like your maths teacher? <laughs> maths teachers are the most hated. <laughs> How about the father maths teacher? You almost think that you have a person now. You are a weak. <laughs> so, so, if they give people gifts, I don't know whether you did further maths here. I don't know what they call it here. But that kind of advanced maths. We almost think that those people are from hell. Because we don't like them. But really, it's not about them. But you know there are some courses you will not get in without them. Don't pass maths. And tell me how far you can go. So ladies and gentlemen, it's not about liking some of the processes that God will pass you through to get you into the overflow are not pretty. That is why he anointed you so it's not going to be by emotions. Hey. Overflow is not emotional. So he puts an anointing to give you the spirit to help you conform in the beast of chaos. Sorry, I wanted to preach, but I, I'm teaching. If you're getting blessed, say amen. amen. So it's abiding. So you, you being in Christ, you reading the scriptures, you seeing the way Christ did things, you must learn to abide in the word, pay attention to the teachings of the word, and whatever Christ says in the word of God, let that become a part and parcel of your life. Somebody shout a big amen. John 15 says it, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you'll bear more fruit. Then you'll bear more fruit. That's overflow. So letting the word of God dwell in you richly. Yes, you, there's a way you want to do it. But your way may not be the God way. So choosing the God way ushers you into the overflow. Point number three, you must seek the kingdom of God first. Somebody say you must seek the kingdom of God first. You must put God first in your decision. You must want to advance the kingdom of God first. When you put God first in anything you do, then every other thing that you need will be added to you. Let me tell you, you cannot be smarter than God. You cannot be. You can't cheat God. He created you. He, that's why they call him the ancient of days. Have you ever seen when your child is trying to play a trick on you? And you are going to tell your child, we were the one that formed this trick. <laughs> Brother Nick was telling the son, or I think it was your, your younger brother that was telling your son, it was because of you that your father, because of him that your father made these laws when I stayed with him. Let me tell you, God has formed Adam many years. God has seen the nature of man. God has proven the character of many people before you. God can tell the way you will behave if he blesses you. So don't confirm his fears. Did you, did you hear me? The reason why God don't raise people again is not because he doesn't want to raise people. Because many people, when he, they are raised, they take off. So God said, if I raise this, even the angel will remind him, sir, if you raise this one, he will not come to church. You. Just leave him, let him be coming. Just leave him, leave him, leave him the way. Just give him, just give him the basic. Because if you bless him overflow, we won't see him again. Go read the scripture. King Uzziah, he was marvelously helped until he became very strong. Then he exalted himself and told the priest, who are you, priest? And they told him, sir, you cannot enter the temple and make sacrifices. He was mad until God struck him with leprosy. Listen to me. Don't let the overflow make you feel that you are right with God. It, because it causes pride. And pride goes before a fall. A haughty spirit before destruction. By strength shall no man prevail. Putting God first. Putting his kingdom first in everything. David said, I have said the Lord always before me. He's at my right hand. I will not be shaking. Point number four. And this is where I will stop this morning. Point number four, the ability to listen to divine instruction would usher you into the overflow. Is somebody hearing me? 
ability. Somebody say ability. To listen. To obey. Divine instruction. That is where a lot of people fail. In the very fine details of destiny, you may have everything set, everything working. It's almost like a man that you were gifted a car, but if you don't know where the button to kick the car to start, you cannot enjoy the car. The car is a pretty toy. Many people are in destiny. God wants to bless them, but there's something called the key of obedience. I said it to the leaders, and this is the best way I can describe it again. I may have mentioned it here last Sunday. Everything God shows you is in 2D, in vision. Obedience, we convert the picture to 3D. I hope you understand what I mean by it. So, look at this picture now. The picture of the building. Everybody look here. So, when God shows us, he shows me the picture. It is pretty. We love it, but how many of you know I cannot jump into the picture? As pretty as it is, it's a painting. That is how many of us see what God shows us. The problem is, everything that God shows you, he has the ability to do. But he will give you the step by step, the modus operandi, the operating system to get there. That converts the picture to reality. If you don't follow the steps, you will have a pretty picture. You won't get it. Let me back off. How many of you have bought an equipment that is self um, to put it together? Huh? Self assemble. It's only in America that you see something. It is $2.99. The first table I ever assembled in the United States when I went to Walmart. I just came to San Antonio. I went to I saw the pretty deck. Pretty. I said, man, I can read here. I can put my laptop here. I can. Put. Oh, man, this is just nice. $55.60 is It's on sale. Hallelujah. So I got it. I said, where is the table? <laughs> they said, this is the table. I said, no, this is not the table. I said, no, no, no. Show me this. I, they said, sir, this is the table. <laughs> so I picked up the table, went, checked it out. It was so. Then I opened it. I saw a lot of plywood, a lot of screws. Is somebody hearing me? I'm, I'm preaching. I hope, you, I hope you know what I'm talking about. I, I hear what I'm saying now. It's the overflow. I got it cheap. The vision is free. That vision God gave you, he didn't charge you. To give it to you. But you go and work for it. Is it a table? It is a table. No, no, no. Someone says it's not a table. It's a piece of plastic. No, no. It's a table. So the first thing you do. Do you just pick it up and start to put it together? No, no. Do do you just... You just, you just pick it up. This, ta this table, ah, nah. You look, some people, you know what they do? Rather than pick up the manual, you know what they keep doing? They keep looking at the picture. They keep looking at the picture to assemble the table and it never becomes the table. Listen to me, there's nothing wrong with the vision. There's just something wrong with your obedience to the instruction that converts the picture to the table. So many of us call God a liar. God, why will you do this to me? And God is looking at you. What are you talking about? I gave you the table. And you look at it. And you look at that paper. You say, what is this paper? I don't care about this paper. God is looking at you. Open the man. I'm too busy. I need a table. 
I really need this table to do this assignment. I, everybody has a table. I'm the only one without a table. And God is looking at you. The earlier you open the manual, the quicker you get a table. The problem is, you can borrow a table, but it ain't yours. You can get mad that everybody got a table except you. You got a table, but you just don't want to assemble it. One thing God will not do for you is to assemble the table. But he will prepare. <laughs> you received the word of God this morning. Stand out to your feet. My time is up. I just want to read this last. Scripture, Isaiah 1 19. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of this land. If you are willing and obedient. The only problem is God cannot serve your good things except your table is set. The preparations are made. The angels are waiting to serve it. But except you set up your table by obedience to the word of God. That manual is the word. If you will meditate, that's why God did not need to tell Joshua anything. He said, do not let this book of the law depart out of thy mouth. But on this law thou shalt meditate day and night. That you might observe to do, observe, observe to do all that is written therein. And thou shalt make, you shall make your way. You, you shall make your own way prosperous. And you have good success. Lift your hands and say, God, give me the grace to obey you.